Picture this, a time when televisions were bulky boxes adorned with knobs and dials, when black and white screens flickered with the magic of stories beamed from distant places. It was in this era that a peculiar little gem emerged, a show that stood out like a technicolor dream in a monochrome world. Green Acres, they called it. The year was 1965, and TV sets across the nation came alive with the quirky adventures of Oliver and Lisa Douglas as they traded the hustle of New York City for the whimsy of rural Hooterville. Do you remember the first time the opening credits rolled, revealing that infectious tune that you couldn't help but hum along to? The sight of a dapper lawyer and his glamorous wife, juxtaposed against a backdrop of pigs, pitchforks, and a bewildered Arnold the Pig, was a sight to behold. It was a collision of cultures, a comedic clash of aspirations and reality that left us in stitches. And who could forget the enigmatic Mr. Haney, forever peddling his wares, or the bumbling yet endearing county agent Hank Kimball? These characters wove a tapestry of idiosyncrasies that became a part of our living rooms. As the series progressed, every episode was a masterclass in finding humor in the mundane, a tribute to the stark contrasts that life often presents. From Lisa's unconventional culinary experiments to Oliver's attempts at mastering farm life, each misadventure and every farcical mishap kept us hooked. And not just for the punchlines. Green Acres, with its offbeat charm, whispered something profound beneath the laughter and invitation to embrace the unexpected, to find joy in the quirks of existence. Now, as we journey back to those days of whimsy and farmland foibles, let's dig up some captivating tidbits about the show that might have escaped our notice. How about the fact that Eva Gabor, who portrayed Lisa Douglas, wasn't initially sold on the idea but went on to become an indelible part of TV history? Or the curious tale of how Eddie Albert, the embodiment of Oliver, actually owned a small farm in real life. These intriguing nuggets infuse new life into the show, adding layers to the laughter we've cherished. So, whether you're revisiting Green Acres or stumbling upon it for the first time, let's celebrate the absurdity, the charm, and the timeless allure of a series that dared to be different. It's a reminder that sometimes, the quirkiest detours lead to the most memorable destinations. And now, as we delve deeper into these remarkable behind-the-scenes revelations, remember that the past is a patchwork of stories, waiting to be unraveled. Get ready to unearth the hidden gems of Green Acres, where the ordinary meets the extraordinary in the most delightful of ways. So, without further ado, let's lift the curtain on the fascinating facts that made this show an unforgettable classic. Longevity defying the screen, enduring lives of the Green Acres cast the quirky universe of the 1965 TV series Green Acres left an indelible mark on the hearts of viewers. And as the years marched on, so did its cast, defying time's embrace. Among the ten regular actors, one reigned supreme in longevity, surpassing all others with an astonishing journey that stretched to 99 years. In the grand tapestry of the show's history, they stood as a testament to resilience, bringing their characters to life and carrying them through the passage of decades. As the final curtain drew near on the Green Acres stage, one named Sean the Brightest, a figure who embodied endurance, living on until the ripe age of 99, defying all odds passed away in 2005. Their fellow cast members, Frank Cady, Sid Melton, and Mary Grace Canfield, joined the ranks of those who crossed the threshold into the next millennium, leaving a trail of memories in their wake. The ageless echoes of their performances reverberate even now, bridging the gap between past and present. Hank Patterson, the show's oldest cast member, took his final bow at 86 in 1975, followed by the youngest, Tom Lester, at 81 in 2020, a poignant reminder of the fleeting nature of life. The mosaic of lives well-lived also featured Pat Buttram, Eva Gabor, and Alvy Moore, whose contributions to the show remain etched in the annals of television history. Yet, a solitary exception, Barbara Pepper, left the stage prematurely in 1969, after the fourth season, a testament to the unpredictability of existence. In the realm of directors, Richard L. Baer orchestrated the majority of the episodes, becoming a cornerstone of the show's success. His passing at the age of 101 in 2015 punctuated an era, a curtain call on a life that intertwined with the show's legacy. And so, as time inexorably marches forward, the Green Acres cast members continue to inspire, their enduring lives a testament to the vitality of those who graced our screens. They leave behind a legacy that reaches beyond the boundaries of television, 
reminding us that the characters they portrayed were but reflections of their own remarkable journeys. 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 Jer Mystery amidst the farmhouse laughter, vanishing stars of Green Acres in the quaint universe of the 1965 TV series Green Acres, where urban sophistication collided with rural simplicity. A subtle enigma remained hidden amidst the laughter and hay bales. Amidst the comic escapades of Lisa and Oliver Douglas, the disappearance of certain four-legged co-stars went largely unnoticed by devoted viewers. The show's early seasons saw an assortment of animals frolic through the screen, pets and farm denizens alike. Lisa Douglas, portrayed by the incomparable Eva Gabor, had a steadfast terrier companion named Mignon. This petite pooch discreetly wagged her way into 11 episodes, a charming presence through the initial arc of season 3. Remarkably, Mignon's presence stretched beyond the Hooterville realm, making cameo appearances on the show's sister series, Petticoat Junction. Yet, as swiftly as she appeared, Mignon vanished, her fate remaining an unresolved narrative thread, lost amid the rolling hills. The puzzle deepens with Eb Dawson, splendidly brought to life by Tom Lester. Akin to his character, Lester hailed from a Mississippi farm, cultivating corn with his own hands, mirroring the toils of Eb. A fleeting episode saw Ebb tenderly caring for a pet tortoise named Alois. Yet, this gentle reptile became a specter, never to resurface in the series again. A cast of chickens Alice, Bertram, Henrietta, and Emma illustrated their way into early episodes, each endowed with a name from the fictitious Mr. Haney. Their presence was as transient as a summer breeze, leaving no trace or cluck behind. Yet, Alina the dairy cow remained a stalwart figure, milk mooing her way through all six seasons. In contrast to the disappearing co-stars, Alina's role in the show remained utterly consistent, providing a steadfast stream of milk and continuity. Jay Somers, the creative maestro, masterfully transposed the series from his 1950 radio show Granby's Green Acres, a radio relic that had shone during summer stints between Lucy's radio endeavors. This early rendition starred Gail Gordon and the beloved B. Benedict, familiar from Petticoat Junction. Benedict gracefully bridged her previous role, guest starring in six inaugural episodes of the TV adaptation, an ephemeral connection to her radio past. As the reels of time turn, the conundrum of these evanescent animal companions deepens, an unsung enigma within the heartwarming tapestry of Green Acres. Their departures, devoid of explanation, lend an unexpected touch of mystery to a show that seemed to hinge on farcical clarity. Amidst the laughter and splendor, the fleeting presence of these creatures adds a touch of bewilderment to the legacy of Green Acres. Green Acres. Green Acres. Truck's evolution, a Ford Bronco Roadster on the Green Acres set in the bucolic world of Green Acres. The idyllic charm of Hooterville was punctuated by the presence of County Agent Hank Kimball and his trusty red truck. However, keen-eyed viewers might have noticed that this vehicle wasn't just a set piece. It was a Ford Bronco Roadster, a familiar face on the show. What's more intriguing is that this open cab truck wasn't static through the series. It transformed annually to match the latest Ford Bronco model. As each new iteration of the Ford Bronco hit the market, the show's creators spared no expense in ensuring the accuracy of Hank Kimball's ride. Whether it was the flare of a new grill or the allure of a fresher paint job, the truck's evolution mirrored the passage of time both on screen and off. This attention to detail added a layer of realism to the series, even in its most whimsical moments. The commitment to authenticity was a nod to the show's overarching dedication to humor rooted in the everyday. Green Acres was known for juxtaposing the rural simplicity of Hooterville with the urban sophistication of Park Avenue, and the red truck embodied this juxtaposition perfectly. The truck, like the show's characters, was a reflection of the time-changing, evolving, and never quite predictable. Though the show's storyline was fictional, its connection to the real world remained strong. The title itself, Green Acres, was a homage to Harold Lloyd's grand mansion, a sprawling estate nestled in Beverly Hills, California. The radio show that preceded the TV series, along with the series itself, derived their names from this opulent Hollywood residence. The irony of this connection wasn't lost on the show's audience, as it underscored the stark contrast between the show's rural setting and its roots in Tinseltown extravagance. In the world of Green Acres, the boundaries of reality and fiction often intertwined. Take, for instance, the wartime experiences of the show's protagonist, Oliver. While the character had a stint as a pilot for the Army Air Corps, it's fascinating to note that actor Eddie Albert's real-life service took a different trajectory. 
Unlike Oliver, who braved the skies over Hungary, Albert found himself in the Pacific Theater of Operations as part of the U.S. Navy. Green Acres was a classic TV show that thrived on the quirks and contradictions of its characters and settings. The Red Ford Bronco Roadster, with its annual transformations, encapsulated this dynamic spirit, embodying the passage of time and the show's commitment to whimsical authenticity. From its cheeky nods to Hollywood opulence to its playful take on wartime experiences, Green Acres remains a prime example of a show that embraced the unexpected, both on and off the screen. As we bid adieu to this nostalgic journey through the quirky world of the 1965 TV series, Green Acres, take a moment to let the echoes of Hooterville reverberate in your mind. Just like the characters navigated the fine line between country simplicity and city glamour, perhaps you two have danced along the edge of contrasting worlds in your own life. Whether you found yourself chuckling at Oliver's futile attempts to modernize the farm or sympathizing with Lisa's glamorous aspirations, there's a slice of green acres in all of us. It's a reminder that life often presents us with a symphony of incongruities, and it's in embracing these eccentricities that we truly find our stride. As you reflect on the show's timeless themes of change, adaptation, and finding humor in the unlikeliest of places, consider sharing your cherished memories and musings. How did the show touch your heart? Did it teach you something about the balance between dreams and reality? Your perspective is a vibrant thread in the rich tapestry of Green Acres enthusiasts. So, let the laughter linger and the moments resurface, those hilarious misadventures and heartwarming connections that made Green Acres a classic. Thank you for taking this stroll down memory lane, for sharing in the charm of Hooterville, and for allowing the show to live on in your thoughts and conversations. Your time and curiosity are deeply appreciated. And now, with a nod to the past and a smile toward the future, well sign off, well sign off, well 